Greetings and welcome back. This is your boy Kamal once again, and terribly sorry for not releasing new content this week. I've been pretty occupied with quite a few things. In particular, I'm moving into a new place. So to make up for some lost ground, we're going to be evaluating the integral from 0 to infinity of log 1 plus x to the alpha over 1 plus x to the beta times 1 over 1 plus x squared times log x. Yeah, that's quite a bit of stuff there. This is one hell of an integral. So what exactly is our strategy? Well, first things first, let me remind all of you that you guys are awesome. Now, we have a logarithm here. So we can expand this as log 1 plus x to the alpha minus log 1 plus x to the beta using the properties of the logarithm, of course. So we can treat this as an integral function problem and define the integral function i of the parameter alpha as the integral from 0 to infinity of log 1 plus x to the alpha over 1 plus x squared times log x dx. Okay, cool. So the advantage of the strategy is that if we differentiate this thing with respect to the alpha parameter, on the left hand side we have the derivative of i with respect to alpha, and on the right, after switching up the order of the operators, we have the integral from 0 to infinity of the partial derivative with respect to alpha of log 1 plus x to the alpha over 1 plus x squared times log x dx. So because we're differentiating partially with respect to alpha, all of the x terms or functions independent of alpha, that is, are being held constant. So we have integral 0 to infinity, 1 over 1 plus x squared times log x. And now differentiating the log term gives us the reciprocal of the argument. And by the chain rule, up top we have x to the alpha times log x on differentiation dx. Okay, cool. So we have some cancellation here. And we have i prime of alpha equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the alpha dx over 1 plus x squared times 1 plus x to the alpha. Now one could think of a partial fraction decomposition here or make use of one of the mathematician's two favorite tools, one being expanding by 0 and the other being expanding by 1. So in this case we'll expand by 0 and we'll write this thing as the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the alpha plus 1 minus 1 over 1 plus x squared times 1 plus x to the alpha dx. So using the linearity of the integration operator, we'll write this as the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 plus x to the alpha over 1 plus x squared times 1 plus x to the alpha, and we see this nice cancellation taking place, minus the integral from 0 to infinity of dx over 1 plus x squared times 1 plus x to the alpha. Okay, cool. So that means we have this integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus x squared, which we know sorts out to the arctangent function. So we have arctangent x with the limits being 0 and infinity. And we'll call this thing i sub 1. So we have minus i sub 1 here. And this means we have pi over 2 minus 0, which is pi over 2 minus i sub 1 as i prime of alpha. That means our next target is to figure out i sub 1. Now i sub 1 makes for a pretty interesting math snack on its own. We have this 1 plus x to the alpha term in the denominator, but we also have something that looks pretty familiar. And that is this dx over 1 plus x squared term. Because it hints at a transformation that is letting x here equal tangent theta, which implies that dx here equals secant squared theta d theta. Okay, cool. So this implies that d theta equals dx over secant squared theta. And secant square, we all know that's 1 plus tangent square, and tangent theta here is x, so we have dx over 1 plus x squared. Now, for x to approach 0, we need theta approaching 0 as well, and for x to approach positive infinity, theta must approach pi over 2. So this implies that i sub 1 transforms quite interestingly into an integral from 0 to pi over 2 
of d theta terribly sorry about that over one plus tangent to the alpha of theta and this is a pretty straightforward integral all we need to do is expand the tangent function here as sine over cosine so we have integral zero to pi over two d theta over one plus sine to the alpha of theta over cosine to the alpha of theta and we'll expand upstairs and downstairs by cosine to the alpha of theta giving us the integral from zero to pi over two of cosine to the alpha of theta d theta over cosine to the alpha of theta plus sine to the alpha of theta so that's i sub one or rather i should say one version of i sub one for another version let's perform the phase shift going from the theta realm to the pi over 2 minus theta realm and in that case all the sines transform into cosines and cosines into sines giving us i sub 1 as the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine to the alpha theta d theta over cosine to the alpha of theta plus sine to the alpha of theta okay cool so we have these two versions of i sub 1 and we'll add them up to get 2 i sub 1 and we'll make use of the linearity of the integration operator to write this as the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine to the alpha of theta plus sine to the alpha of theta over cosine to the alpha of theta plus sine to the alpha of theta d theta we have some lovely cancellation meaning that this thing is just pi over 2 terribly sorry about that which implies that i sub 1 is itself pi over 4 and this is pretty interesting because we do recall that i prime of alpha equaled pi over 2 minus i sub 1 so that's just pi over 2 minus pi over 4 meaning that i prime of alpha is just pi over 4 in other words it's independent of the alpha parameter itself so we could just rename this parameter to t and write this as i prime of t equal to pi over 4 and now to recover the integral function integrate from beta to alpha with respect to t so that gives us i of alpha minus i of beta equal to pi over 4 alpha minus beta and the reason I want i of alpha minus i of beta is recall that the integral function was the integral from 0 to infinity of log 1 plus x to the alpha over well you would now have for i of beta 1 plus x to the beta and all the same stuff so you can combine them and then make use of the properties of, of the logarithm to get 1 plus x to the alpha over 1 plus x to the beta as the argument of the logarithm just as required by the target integral we start off with and we have this dx over 1 plus x squared times log x and that means this whole thing equals quite elegantly pi over 4 times alpha minus beta okay cool this was pretty awesome I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.